And this is Stefana Muller, your Senior Sin Principal Product Manager for CA Service Virtualization. And I just presented to you in part one of this session what opaque data processes, processing is. And now in this demonstration, I will show you how it works. Now, um, to just start out, I'm going to be showing you this simple phone book app. It is connecting to a backend IMS application, so on the mainframe. And right now, I'm going to be hitting the live mainframe. So I've got my port, my host entered in correctly, my port correctly, uh, a few, the IMS code page, the command, which is display. And I'm going to type in something that I know is out there on that uh, that live machine, I'm going to first type in a name that I know is out there, which uh, one name that is out there is power, so I'm going to type that in. And I'm going to hit that live machine and make sure that I have access. So as you can see, my request went through, it said, um, my request went through, the command is display power, and the response comes back as John Power is the account that I pulled up, if you would, or my phone book sample that I put, pulled up. So this is just a simple way for me to hit a, a mainframe system with a command and, and get a response. Now, I'm going to show you how I can record those requests and responses using opaque data processing and then allow opaque data processing to respond to new requests that it does not know. So if you, if you see here, the last name is Power is on that system. There's a few other last names that are on that system which I will go and ping. I'm gonna record those transactions and then the next step is I'm gonna play it back to me in a virtual service. So first let me get my recorder set up. So to set up my recorder, I have a few different things set up here. Um, I'm going to go in and start the VSE recorder. Now I know that this is the Dev Test Solutions build 801 um, and it is, I'm using the older recorder. For now we'll be using this older recorder and eventually I'll be moving it into the Dev Test portal. So the first thing I need to do is figure out my image name. I'm going to use some really simple numbers for myself so that I can type it quick. So I'm going to create my image name, my model name, and the key here is to take my transport protocol and select opaque data processing. This is telling my recorder that I have no idea what data this is. Although I know it is IMS transactions, I'm going to pretend that I don't know what it is. It's binary data. I cannot read it. Okay, next I get into the step of figuring out my listen port. So I'm going to choose a listen port as 8008. I know nothing is running on there right now. And that will be where my recorder listens. Um, and my target host is that IP address that I had before. It's the live system. So here we go. We'll just type that in here. And once I get this in here, I'm going to put the port that I need to connect to. So what this is doing, and I'm just going to be a little bit more descriptive here, it's saying listen on port 8008 and then take that listen, that whatever you captured, and forward it to the live system. And then listen again for something coming back from that live system, right? And that's how I'm able to act as a quote unquote man in the middle on these transactions so that I can initiate it from the client, it can hit that target host even though I am, I'm trying to record in the middle. Okay, very simply I hit next. There's a lot of options here but they're not necessary for opaque data processing so I'm going to hit next and now I'm in the record screen. So now that I'm in the record screen I'm going to open up my phone book app again and I'm going to move that a little forward here so we can see it. Uh, I'll move my recorder forward so we don't have this guy in the way. And here we go. We've got my recorder and we've got my phone book app. And remember, now I need to point to my local host because I want to point to my recorder. I don't want to point directly my front end system directly to that back end system that's live. I want to I want to point to my recorder and I want my recorder to point to the back end system. So it's acting as a man in the middle. So the first one I will run, I'm going to run this transaction of power again because we know that guy John Power is in the system. And when I run it, 
you can see here on the right side of the screen that two transactions were detected. It's the request and the response. Now I'm going to put a few others in here. Okay, I know that's in my system, so I'm going to hit run and it's transacting. Now I'm going to do something fun and I'm going to do just something that we'll remember. Test one, test two, and test three. Okay, remember we did test one, two, and three. We did not do test four. And there you go, I've got a bunch of transactions up to nine. Oh, 10 transactions here. And I'm going to stop my recording. I'm going to say I'm done. Now, in a, like I said earlier in my first recording, doing a demonstration here, I'm just getting a, as many transactions as I can. You would want at least two transactions for each command. So I'm only doing the display command right now because that's what works in this, in this sample application. But in your application, you're gonna have multiple commands. You're gonna have multiple operations. So you wanna record as many of those operations as you can. Okay, now I'm gonna hit next and next again and next one more time. Everything else is, is done. So at this point, I've saved it. I'm going to open up that service image so you can see what it looks like. So now that the service image is opening up, you can see that I grabbed those 10 transactions and they're really human unreadable. It's binary data. How am I, as a human, to be able to identify this data, identify the arguments, identify the operations, and so on? There's no data protocol handler to handle this today. And remember, in IMS, we do have a data protocol handler. I'm just making a, a, a guess here, saying that this isn't something I've seen before. So how do I learn how to respond to new requests that are coming in? Um, so now I'm going to pretend that we're going to figure this out. Remember, I just, um, I'm going to deploy my virtual service and write to my, my VSC. Okay, it's out there and it's deployed. And I'm going to show you it. And then we're going to hit it again so that you can see. So if I open up my browser and I go to my server console, you can see that my virtual service is running. It's 123, 8008 is the port. We selected that and it shows up as TCP and that's what we're capturing the transactions on the TCP protocol. Um, but it is ODP or o opaque data uh, processing. So you can see here it's been running for about 29 seconds and I'm going to point and remember now Localhost 8008 is my virtual service. It's no longer my recorder. My recorder isn't running anymore. So Localhost 8008 is my virtual service. I'm going to be hitting that directly. I'm going to test it out and see if it works. Remember the, the names we used? Uh, let's use power first. And I'm going to hit run. It's trying the command. And it says, John Power was found. Great, that means that my virtual service recorded that transaction has an exact response for it. Great. You can see here up on the screen, you see my transaction count went up to two. That means it got, it, my virtual service actually did respond to it. It wasn't the live service. Um, now I'm going to put Goyal. And I'm going to click run again. It tries that command and it comes back with Goyal. Um, remember, these are a magic string, so it's just pulling up John because that's the only first name that I have in my system. Now, you see four transactions. Okay, remember before we did test one, test two, test three. I did not do test four. And this is the proof point of that ODP is working. ODP does not know the protocol. It doesn't know that test is the last name. It doesn't know how to respond to that. So what it is doing is I'm going to write in test four. And remember, we did not record this. <laughs> Just saying it one more time. We're going to hit the run button. And you can see here that test four was responded to and the transaction was processed. So my very dumb mock of a virtual service 
actually became smart automatically. So I know I can't show you the matching algorithm or the, you know, the genome sequencing that is happening, um, but I can show you that it works. And that is a quick sample of how ODP can do matching the way that we described earlier and how it actually does work. So if you'd like to hear more on this subject, I definitely encourage you to comment on this video. Let me know what other things you'd like to see. Um, I, this is our first pass as a demo and I'm really excited to share with you this technology. Thanks and have a great time.